All right, so by using existing typefaces within vector, that gives me a place to start. So I don't have to trace all of these vectors, you know, over the top of my sketch, like I would a, a custom type design. But it is a little bit of a pain, though it's worth it, to individually space and create a new text layer for each element where you want to change the different aspects, right? Like the size, the color, um, I'm going to make all of these just black for now as I kind of finalize it because when I save it as an SVG, then it's a vector that I can then bring in to uh, play with in a raster program and add color to. But we want to design all of our type as just black type design to begin with. Now, I like this, but the AGU is just so ordinary. So I'm going to duplicate that. First, let me get rid of all that extra space that was in the text design. There we go. And then let me right click and duplicate it twice so I can separate out each letter. So I'm going to have one for the U. One for the G. And this is hand setting. And it makes you a type designer to have to really pay attention to each aspect. And then one for the A. So I want this A to be a little bit bigger. And it will kind of show me when it's lining up with the center. And I can use my arrow keys to nudge it. Hmm, it doesn't like that. Then my G, notice how this G to me is much more readable than that G. So that's why I'm using it. I'm just going to keep it at its standard size, but I'm going to space it and give it a little bit more space around. And then the U, I'm actually going to give the U a border. This is another way you can customize it. A black border to thicken it a little bit. And that way I can thicken the U and bold it if I want to. Make it a little bit more readable. And then I can always just adjust the E and maybe make the E a tiny bit bigger too. Now the L feels like needs to maybe drop down. I mean, there's, I don't want to get too fancy with my type design. I want it to still stay readable. All right. So now I have plague. I want to save this. So I'm going to export it as an SVG and download it. So these are all vector shapes but they're locked to type tools, right? Now I'm going to move that. This is all because we're using a browser-based program into my folder for assignment eight. So I can give it a name, not just untitled. I'm going to call this. Now there's a lot of ways that you can modify existing typefaces, right? One way is to just use things like warp once you're in your um, your raster program. Everything's taking a while to load. But this is just one I did with kind of classic tattoos. 
And so you can take the type layers and you can just warp them, modify them so they look more hand done. But you always want to start with a vector. So we want to design our type as a black vector type first. Now plague is done, but it's not very useful on its own. So now I have to do anxiety, right? And we're going to do those as separate. So how do I switch it out? Well, first I decide what do I want to keep from this one? What individual letters do I want to break out? And I like the N. And I like the X. And I like the Y. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. Whoops. Three times. I'm going to isolate the different letters. so that I can modify them individually. It's a lot like exercise two and just using shape tools, but this, this time the shapes are all letter forms. And what's hard is we can't just access them like normal vectors until we save them as an SVG, right? So now for anxiety, I just want certain parts. I want the A, so I'm going to copy that and paste it. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted, so I just have to duplicate. But then what's nice is because this is all the same typeface, I can isolate it to just the A. Nothing fancy about this yet. And then I can just duplicate it from there. Okay, so for the A, how do I want to design this? I want it bigger. Bigger still. You can actually just increase the size by using the box around the little keys, but you can't narrow it, right? You can flip it. So that's interesting. Like I can flip it horizontally. Hmm, which I might do. No. But you can't um, like make it narrower while it's still a type design. Okay, the N, I'm just fine with that. The X I'm gonna make a little bit bigger. So when you're playing with the spacing between the letters, that's called the kerning. When you're doing lines of type like this, the space between lines of type, that's called the leading in type design. And all of this is just adding kind of a your own aesthetics, your own handmade touch to it. I think I will make the N a little bit bolder like I did for the U. So for that, I'm gonna turn on a border. You can see it in hot pink. Make that a couple pixels and then change it to solid black. For the eye, I want to make this a lot 
folder. And I want this to feel a little wavy. I don't know why it's giving me those errors. I haven't seen that in Grammarly before. It doesn't like adjusting all this type. Or in vector. And so this is going to look more like a tattoo banner, right? A little wavy. And it allows me to, to make the kerning a little bit closer as well between the letter forms, the spacing in between the letters. Because they're stepping down and stepping up. Now this one I might flip. Oh, it's not an A anymore, though. Let's see. So this is going to be a T. So flipping it doesn't matter. I'm going to grow it. T's are tough. In fact, I might even do a lowercase T. Oh, but that lowercase T is really odd when it's flipped. So let me flip it back. Yeah, I like the lowercase t for this. And I could always try this lowercase t as well for this other typeface. But that's too plain looking, I think. This I'm going to shrink a little bit. Yeah, it's feeling anxious. So let's make this quite a bit bigger. I wish I could keep it thin though. Hmm. What does the uppercase Y look like? That is the uppercase Y. Oh, the lowercase I, it's a little bit Y, it's a little bit longer at the top. That's nice. Okay. So now, let me delete all the things I don't need. And turn these all to black. This is all just arranging elements, but this is creative, and you're creating your own kind of logo type language by hand adjusting everything. What we haven't done is actually augment them. We haven't added our own vector shapes to them. And what I want to do is get them to a place where these are just vectors that then I can modify as is. So I'm going to export this. Same thing, it will download. I'm just being extra cautious. It comes in as untitled. I save that to my folder. So you can kind of see the process of type design. It went from that now to where to go. <laughs> Uh, to this, and now I need to to isolate them. This is why it was important to save it. So of the two, why did that double up? Okay, of the two, I like anxiety best. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these. I should be able to do that by just drawing a box around them and then hitting delete. But why did that mess with the rest? I do not know. So there's a lot of kind of sub-programming with typefaces because of all the options that are built.